divisions and getting inserted similar to that of the flexor digitorum longus it is called as digitorum longus because it will be going right. and getting inserted to all the four lateral digits that's okay okay so here also it is going to the four lateral digits so that's why the name is similar except this one brevis that is longus okay so you should know the difference between the uh, longus and the brevis okay so this is the first muscle flexor digitorum longus second is abductor hallucis the name indicates many things okay abductor means it is abduction the function hallucis means the great toe okay, uh, okay so this is the abductor hallucis mm. then we have yeah, digit minimi what do you mean the digit minimi small, small, small finger small. here also we have digit minimi so there are muscles which are attached okay so here also the small digit so that's why it is called as the abductor digit minimi there is function as well as the muscle which is attached to the small finger okay so these are the three muscles of this compartment okay so we will go to just some of the features what is the origin it is taking origin from the medial tubercle of the calcaneum so this is the bone called as calcaneum so it has two tubercles one is the medial tubercle because of great toe great toe is medial right okay so this should be the medial tubercle and on the other side is the lateral tubercle in case of the hand the thumb is outside so it is lateral in case of the foot it has rotated so it is medial so that's the difference between the hand and the foot okay so so this is the medial tubercle and the lateral tubercle this muscle take origin from the medial tubercle as well as something called a plantar aponeurosis that we talk later like in case of hand we have palmar aponeurosis what is that palmar aponeurosis uh, it, is, it is modified the fascia in case of the hand triangular shape if you can remember similarly in case of foot we have something palmar plantar aponeurosis will study about that later okay so it takes origin both from this medial tubercle as well as the plantar aponeurosis insertion to the margins of the middle phalanx of the lateral four digits as i showed so it will divide into four and it goes all the way to the four digits but in case of flexor digitorum longus it will go to the base of the distal phalanx and get inserted you see a flexor digitorum longus in the getting inserted to the base of the distal phalanx but in case of this one it goes and divides near the middle phalanx and i get inserted on either side okay this is the difference between the longus and the brevis so the brevis this is the brevis going divide on either side and get inserted to the middle phalanx the longus goes get and is get inserted to the distal phalanx okay so it goes to the margins of the middle phalanx of the lateral four toes and get inserted that is the insertion supplied by the medial plantar nerve i said only there are four muscles which are supplied by the medial plantar nerve so the two muscles are here itself two muscles are supplied the first layer itself okay so you already know the two muscles one is the flexor digitorum brevis and the abductor hallucis okay the action as the name indicate it helps in the flexion of the all the four digits so whenever they contract it helps in the flexion of the lateral four digits plantar okay yeah plantar flexion yeah that is called as plantar flexion okay so the flexion of the four digits <coughs> the second muscle is the abductor hallucis okay. that also takes origin from the medial tubercle of the calcaneum as something called as the flexor retinacle we have studied the retinacle before okay so it takes origin from insertion to the medial side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe so it goes all the way and get inserted to the base this is the base of the the proximal phalanx on the medial side as i said this side is medial so it get inserted to the medial side okay this is the origin and insertion the nerve supply as i said these two muscles are supplied by the same medial plantar nerve so now you have to look for the other two muscles and the remaining all muscles will be supplied by the lateral plantar nerve okay so as the name indicates it helps in the abduction of the great toe so it is getting inserted to the great toe so it helps in the abduction what do you mean by abduction in case of the hand how is the abduction and adduction abduction hmm? of abduction of the great toe okay other toe other fingers okay abduction is like this adduction is like this okay and the axis will be the center this one all the uh, 
digits when they go towards the medium side of this one, then it is called as adduction. When they go away, then it is called abduction. In case of hand, in case of foot, this is not the axis. This is the axis. Second digit is the axis. So that is the difference between the hand and the foot. So the second digit. So here. So the second digit here. Uh, so this one is the axis. Okay. So all the digits when they go towards the medial side of this one, so then it is called as adduction. And when they go away, abduction. then it is called as abduction. So this helps in abduction. Okay. So when it moves away, then it is called as abduction from the the second finger. Okay. So that is the abduction of the hallucis. The third muscle is the abductor digiti minima this is the muscle okay so this takes origin from the lateral tubercle okay lateral mainly from lateral as well as small part from the medial also okay so lateral and medial tubercles and gets inserted to the lateral side of the proximal phalanx of the great related to because it is digiti minima so it is going towards the lateral side and gets inserted to the and the action is as you know it is the abduction And the nerve supply is all other muscles are supplied as I said by the lateral plantar. So this is also supplied by the lateral plantar. So this is the abductor. So it helps in the abduction of the digitorum. So, so these are the three muscles of the first compartment. Second compartment, even though there are five muscles, it looks difficult. So these are the most easiest, which have more number. Because out of the five muscles, four are lumbricals. There is only one muscle left. This is called as the flexor digitorum accessorius. There is a muscle, a small muscle, which is called as the flexor digitorum accessorius. This is the only four muscle and the four lumbricals. Lumbricals we have in the hand also, right? Mm -hmm. Why they are called as lumbricals? Yeah. Because uh, worms. They look like worms. Okay, that's why they are like worms. So that's why they are called as lumbricals. So we have in case of hand as well as even in case of the. So there are four lumbricals, one, two, three, four. They are numbered from the medial to lateral side. This is the first, second, third, and fourth. Starting from the great toe, they will be numbered. So even the metacarpals here, this, this is the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. In case of hand, we start from lateral side. In case of the foot, we start from the medial side. Okay, here we call it as this is as the first, second, third, and fourth, and fifth. Okay. So in case of foot, it will be from the medial to lateral. So this is the first lumbrical, second, third, and the fourth lumbrical, and a muscle called as the quadratus uh, plantae. This is the second name. Usually we call it as the, the flexor digitorum accessorius. So the origin of this muscle is by two heads. If you can see here, there are two heads from the two tubercles, medial and lateral tubercle. And the insertion is to a tendon called as the flexor digitorum longus, which we are discussing. Okay, the flexor digitorum longus. Origin from the medial lateral tubercles of the calcaneum and the insertion to the tendon of the flexor digitorum longus. Okay, so it starts from here. So the two tubercles go and get inserted to the digitorum longus. So this is the flexor digitorum longus. This is the muscle of the posterior compartment of leg. It is going to the, the foot also. Okay. Then what is the nerve supply? It is by the lateral plantar. This is also by the lateral. And it helps in the 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 strengthens the pull of the long flexor tendons. So whenever the muscle contract, so whenever this muscle contract, it helps in pulling it straight because it is going from medial to lateral side. So there might be slightly uh, movement, not straight. So this muscle will help in pulling this tendon straight. So there is flexion of these fingers. It will flex. Okay. So this is the flexor digitorum. Accessorius, okay. Origin from two tubercles inserted to the flexor tubercle longus. And there are four lumbricals. These are the four lumbricals. The first is unipinnate. What do you mean by unipinnate? What do you mean by unipinnate? All the fibers are in one direction. Five pinnate means they are in two direction. Okay. So in case of this, the first muscle, the first lumbrical, it is unipinnate. All the fibers are in one direction. Five pinnate. All these are second, third, and fourth are five pinnate. So they are from two directions. They are joined together. Okay. So these are second, third, and fourth are bipinnate. The first one is unipinnate. First unipinnate. All others are bipinnate. Origin from the stent down. 
they are from the tendon of the flexor duodenum longus from the tendon of the flexor duodenum insertion to the extensor expansion when they go if you can see here this is the lumbricle so this is the muscle the insertion is going towards the dorsal surface on the dorsal top surface and there is something called as the dorsal deltal expansion even in case of finger there is modified deep fascia covering all the fingers similarly in case of the foot there is dorsal deltal expansion there is nothing but the modified deep fascia which covers the digits completely okay so if you can see here you can see a part of it so this is the dorsal deltal expansion so this lumbrical will go towards dorsal surface and get inserted to the dorsal deltal expansion okay so the nerve supply the first one is supplied by the medial plantar nerve so this is the third nerve so we have seen the two muscles the third muscle is here the first lumbrical okay so there is only one muscle which is remaining which is supplied by the medial plantar all other muscles will be supplied by the lateral okay so other muscles are supplied by the other second third and fourth lumbricals will be supplied by lateral plantar nerve and the action is it helps in the maintenance of extension at the interphalangeal joint so because it is going towards the dorsal surface on the dorsal surface so it helps in the extension like this okay because it is going even though it is on the sole but they will go on the top and they help in the extension if it is from below it has to flex but it is going on the top you can see here it is going on the top so it is going to the dorsal deltal expansion so it helps in the extension of the digits so that is the extension of the interphalangeal joint so this is the muscles of the second layer the third layer again has three muscles one is the flexor halis brevis this one the second is the flexor deltic minimi brevis this one and the third is the adductor halis in the first layer it was adductor now it is the adductor halis so these three muscles again flexor halis brevis it is y shape if you can see here it is y shape tendon and the lateral limb begins from the cuboid bone there is a bone here we will study all the bones later in the lab so there is one bone here called as cuboid so this lateral limb will take origin from here okay and the medial limb will be continuation of there is something called as the tibialis posteriorum which we have studied already okay there is the muscle of the posterior compartment of limb so this will come here and get inserted this is the tibialis posterior and the continuation of the same will be the medial limb the medial head there are two heads so the medial head will be continuation of the posterior tibialis posterior and the lateral head begins from the cuboid bone so they will continue and get inserted to either side of the the proximal base of the proximal phalanx so they will get inserted to the the base of the proximal phalanx of the great bone okay, because it is hallucis so it should be the great bone the for this is the fourth muscle which is supplied this is the medial plantar nerve so we know now there are four muscles and this is the fourth muscle so all remaining muscles will be supplied by the lateral plantar nerve as the name indicates this helps in the flexion of the the great toe so it helps in the flexion of the great toe great toe okay so the second muscle is the adductor halis this is the adductor halis the origin of this muscle by two heads again it has an oblique head and a transverse head this is the transverse side and this is the oblique head okay the oblique head takes origin from the second to fourth metacarpal bases of the meta these are the metacarpals these are the metatarsals in case of hand we have metacarpals here we have metatarsals so here is the first second third fourth and fifth so this will take origin from the base this is the base of second third and fourth okay insertion to the lateral side of the base of the proximal phalanx of the the big toe so it is to the proximal phalanx of the big toe on the lateral side this is the medial side with the lateral side okay then we have the the transverse side which takes origin from the deep the metatarsal ligament there is a ligament here called as the deep metatarsal ligament so it takes origin from here and get again inserted to the, the lateral side of the proximal phalanx of the big toe so all now you know all other muscles are supplied by the lateral plantar nerve and as the name indicates it helps in the adduction so whenever the great toe 
muscle acts so it helps in the adduction it pulls on the medial side so that is the action of this muscle okay adductor the third muscle is the flexor ad minima this is the muscle it takes origin from the base of the fifth metatarsal so it is from the base of the base of fifth metatarsal the origin and going and getting inserted to the base of the proximal phalanx lateral side base of the proximal phalanx lateral side and again this is also supplied by the lateral plantar nerve and as the name indicate it helps with the flexion of the lateral toe okay so this is the flexion of the lateral toe okay so this is the third layer three by three and the fourth is the seven muscles there are seven muscles so it looks great but it is not so it is not so difficult so these four muscles out of four seven three are plantar interosseal four are dorsal interosseal so that is so simple so three are plantar interosseal four are dorsal interosseal if you can see here here also in case of hand we have palmar as well as dorsal interosseal okay there are four 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 on the palmar four on the dorsal but in case of the hand yeah a uh, palmar on plantar on the uh, on this surface yeah palmar or plantar are same side okay in case of the foot it will be dorsal yeah. side mm -hmm. dorsal will be this side and on the foot it will be on the top side okay so you can see here this is the yeah. dorsal interosseal there are four first second third and fourth there are four dorsal interosseal and three palmar of our plantar okay so here you can see it is slightly different color the first second and the third or the first second and the third so these are the seven muscles out of uh, uh, seven muscles four are dorsal interosseal and three are plantar interosseal if you can see here the slightly different color slightly pinkish okay so the four dorsal interosseal they are bipinnate all these muscles are bipinnate if you can see here they are coming from two direction okay from the either side of the metacarpal metatarsal bone so this is first and second so it is coming between the first and second here the second will come from second and third okay like that so this is the origin of this muscle and they all go to the bases of the proximal phalanx you can see here they go to the base of the proximal phalanx along if you can see here these are the lumbricals and here are the dorsal interosseal they are all join on the dorsal deltoid expansion and the nerve is the lateral plantar nerve and we have the three plantar interosseal all are unipinnate you can see here they are only one direction the other muscle which you are seeing is the dorsal interosseal this one okay so they are unipinnate only one direction first second and the third okay so they will be taking origin from the the adductor side of the third to fifth metatarsal so this is the adductor side which is this you can see here in this picture so here they have shown you the axis of this Foot, okay, and the direction. So whenever the fingers digits move laterally, then it is abduction. Whenever they are green colored, they are adduction. And they have given the muscles. The adductor muscles are the plantar interosseal and the abductor are the dorsal interosseal. So these are the dorsal interosseal and the abduction. So whenever they move, just like in case of hand, the dorsal interosseal help in the abduction. Plantar palmar interosseal will help in the flexion our adduction the same thing in case of foot dorsal interosseal will help in abduction and plantar interosseal help in the adduction of the fingers okay so this is about the uh, seven muscles four here dorsal interosseal three plantar interosseal okay so the blood supply is by the lateral plantar artery okay if you see here this is a tibial artery you know that the popliteal artery will divide into the posterior tibial artery and anterior so the posterior tibial artery is here okay which supply the posterior compartment of leg that enters the foot it is entering the foot then it divides into two branches lateral and medial plantar arteries okay so the lateral you can see here it going all the way and it supplies lot of muscles okay so that's why that is the lateral plantar artery yeah. Uh, the lateral plantar from uh, posterior tibia. Yeah, it is a branch of the posterior tibial artery. You can see here, this is the posterior tibial artery dividing into lateral and medial. So most of the area is supplied by the lateral plantar, and small area is supplied by the even medial plantar. Both are branches of the posterior tibial artery. Okay. Nerve supply, as you already know, I said, eighty muscles are there, and mostly all muscles are supplied by the lateral plantar. You can see here, 
this is not this is the TPL now. So we supply the postic compartment of leg. Now it comes to the foot. Okay, then it divides into lateral and medial plantar arteries, uh, nerves. Okay, so this is the lateral plantar nerve, which supplies most of the muscles, and this is the medial plantar nerve. Okay, so here you can see it is going dividing into multiple branches, dividing and supplies. Okay, that's why it supplies eight fourteen muscles. Here it looks as though this also dividing the medial plantar nerve and supply, but it mainly supplies the skin. So it is mainly cutaneous. Okay. So even though the major supply of the muscles is by the lateral plantar nerve, it is a very small area of the skin which it supplies. And the medial plantar nerve, even though it supplies only four muscles, it supplies a large area in the skin. So you should know the cutaneous branches as well as muscular branches. Okay. Then the other nerves which will supply the sensory area or the cutaneous will be the tibial nerve which supplies the heel and the saphenous nerve, the longest nerve as well as the sural nerve. Okay. So these are some of the uh, cutaneous supply for the foot. Okay. Coming to the last part, the plantar aponeurosis. So as I said, there is palmar aponeurosis. Similarly, in case of the foot, we have something called as the plantar aponeurosis. There is nothing but the modified deep fascia. I have told you many times that modified deep fascia in different regions is called by different names. Okay, so you know in the foot we have something called as the plantar aponeurosis. Okay, it has lot of collagen fibers and they are present longitudinally. Okay, so it is triangular in shape, just like in case of the hand also it is triangular in shape. Palmar aponeurosis. Here also it is triangular in shape with the apex towards the heel, calcaneus bone, and the base is towards the phyllis. Okay. So the attachment, it is attached to the mainly to the medial calcaneus, medial tubercle of the calcaneus, where the apex is there, and towards the base it divides into five strips. <coughs> it divides into five strips and goes to the E strip or the E digit of the Toes. Okay, so for each toe it will go as one strip and get inserted to the, the metatarsal heads of the all the toes. Okay. So this is also part of the flexure sheet. Okay. Why it is present? What the importance? What the importance of this plant aponeurosis? One is it maintains the longitudinal large. I had told you in the, the foot is not flat, okay, but it is arch. Okay, okay, it is arch like this. So it has lot of advantages that you will study tomorrow in the lab. Okay. So it is arch. Okay. So to maintain this arch, it is not so easy. So there should be something. There are muscles which are holding it as well as the plantar aponeurus also. It pulls. Because I said it has collagen fibers. So these collagen fibers will be pulling. So they will help in pulling. Okay. So this part are the, so it maintains the longitudinal arch. Yeah. Huh? Important, yeah. Could you repeat? Yeah, I said it maintains the longitudinal arch. Okay, there are arches. There is medial longitudinal arch, lateral longitudinal arch. Then, then there are transverse arches. Okay, okay. So these arches are very important for the foot. If you are jumping from height, if it is flat foot, all the structures which are there, when you jump on it, one thing is it will break all the the bones which are there. Okay, because you are jumping from height and you are going towards the gravity and you are hitting your hard object. So if you it is flat, then it will break your bones. Okay, one thing. And the second thing is there are a lot of structures in the foot, so they will all get injured. Okay, so that's why there should be an arching. Okay, and it gives springing effect. So when you jump, it is not like hard substance hitting something. It is like spring. So you can jump and you can run. Okay as well as propulsive movement which will push you forwards. Many things are there. Okay. So this arching is maintained by this the palma plantar aponeurosis. It will pull and it hold it like this in this position. Arching fashion. Okay. One thing. Second thing is it provides origin of superficial plantar muscle. I told you some of the muscles which are superficial will take origin not only from the bone but also from this plantar aponeurosis. The third and the most important will be protection. 
I said there are important arteries and nerves. So all these structures are there. If there is no protection, when you are walking on a hard object, so it might something might pierce and it might injure all the structures. These structures are very important. These nerves, if they are injured, then then it leads to paralysis of the muscles of this, as well as the loss of cutaneous sensation. Okay, if there is loss of cutaneous sensation, there is something. Especially, it happens in case of diabetic foot. There is loss of sensation, and it leads to lot of complication. Then the foot will be removed. They have to cut the foot. So, okay, so it leads to such complication. So it can happen even if the foot is flat and if the nerves are injured. Okay, so they have to be protected. Important structures like the arteries, the uh, nerves, the veins, as well as even the muscles. Okay, that's why this plantar aponeurosis. Has a very important protective effect okay. because it is thick, pad of fat along with the collagen fibers as well as the modified tissue. Okay. So that's why it helps in the protection of all important vessels and nerves. Okay. Coming to the last part, this is called as the the dorsum of the foot. So the dorsum, and <coughs> this part doesn't have any importance because it doesn't have any uh, important structures except. One muscle, small muscle. There are no intrinsic muscle except one. This is called as the extensor deltoid gravis. There is a muscle here, only muscle on the dorsum. All the muscles are in the sole. Okay, only one muscle here. This is called as the extensor deltoid gravis. This is the muscle. Okay. And similarly, we have something called as the extensor deltoid longus in case of the anterior compartment of the leg. So it is longus and this is. Previous. Okay, so the insertion will be similar. So if you can see here, the extensor deltoid longus it divides into lateral four toes and goes to base of the lateral four. And if you can see here, this is the extensor deltoid brevis that also breaks into four and it is going to all the four digits. Okay. So you want it is going to the the, uh, the great toe also. So this is the extensor deltoid brevis. Along with that, there is a very important artery called as the dorsalis medius artery. Okay, especially when you are going to clinical side as well as the clinical skins, you have to examine this artery. This the dorsalis medius artery. Nothing but the continuation of the anterior tibial artery. Continuous as the dorsalis medius artery. This artery again is very important, especially in case of diabetes as well as there is especially in smokers. Okay, there is something called as TOE. So in that this artery will be blocked. Okay, so palpating this artery, where do you palpate? Between the great toe and the second toe. So there is the artery. This part of the dorsalis medius artery. Okay. So you have to palpate and feel for the pulse. Okay. So this part of the dorsalis medius artery. Along with that, there is dorsal venous arch. Even in case of the hand, there is venous arch. All these veins, what we see, is part of the venous arch. Okay. So similarly, here also in the foot, we have dorsal venous arch. Why it is important? Because the medial part of it will continue as the great saphenous plane, and the lateral part will continue as the small saphenous plane. That's why this venous arch is very important. There is a venous arch called as the dorsal venous arch. It continues medially as the beginning of the great saphenous plane. Lateral part will continue as the short saphenous plane. And finally, coming to the sensory area of this area, we have already discussed that mainly this area is supplied by the superficial peroneal nerve, and a small part supplied by the deep peroneal nerve. Even though major muscles are supplied by the deep peroneal nerve in the leg, but the, you can see here is the deep peroneal nerve supplies the anterior compartment of leg and comes all the way between the two digits and supplies the small area. And here, the superficial peroneal nerve supplies only the lateral compartment two muscles. Then it supplies a large area of the skin. Okay. Then, along with that, on the medial side, it will be the saphenous nerve, and on the lateral side, it will be the solar nerve. This is the cutaneous supply. Okay. So these are the nerves which will be supplying the the skin. Okay. So this is about the foot. And if you have any any doubts regarding this, you can ask me. Okay. So you have to remember the uh, four layers. And the muscles, three, five, three, seven, and the sole, oh, the artery as well as the nerve supplying the sole. Any doubts regarding here?